this is problem 8.6 and we here we have two wedges and this is a and this is b and the a has a slope of 15 degrees and b can slide over a and all the surface are roughed so we have a static coefficient between all surface between a and the floor we have 0.3 and between b and the wall we have 0.3 as well so let's name this wall d and this one c what i'm going to do is draw the free body diagrams of the two wedges simultaneously so we understand what is happening so here we want to find the force p in order to lift this wedge b so we already know what is the tendency of motion we are still in equilibrium but we will analyze the system in impending motion the free body diagram of a and the free body diagram of b so i have my wedge a and as i say i'm going to do them together because i want to analyze both motion and i have the b over here the weight of each of those wedges is neglected compared to this load over here that i'm applying so i have a load over here that is three thousand pounds let me put this a little bit to the left so that we have space okay so we are not given the dimensions of the weight so i'm going to put the normal force somewhere not not necessarily in the middle but i will not be able to calculate moment in this problem because i don't have any dimension so let me call this n c because it's with the floor c and i have here a n d i know that i want to lift this wedge so it means that if i want to lift i know that if tendency of motion is going to be up i will draw my friction force down and if this is going up the only way that this goes up is that this goes in therefore my friction force here will be in this direction and remember the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface so i have a normal force over here that I can call Na. So it's between those two. And for action and reaction, I have the same perpendicular also to my, to my surface, that is NAB. Then I have this force P over here. And now I have my friction force between those two surfaces. As I see, this is moving in this direction. So this friction force have to opposed to this motion so this goes in this direction right of course parallel to my let me draw it very parallel this is very important doesn't have an angle between is perpendicular to my normal force and parallel to my surface right here so and i will call this force a b and for action and reaction definitely then my friction force in this diagram also parallel to my my surface will be fab so i was very careful to get the directions of the forces correctly because once you have the free body diagram correctly then it's adding forces using the equations of equilibrium but it's very important that you uh, get the sign of the arrows and the direction of the arrows correctly because that will lead you to the direction of the forces okay now how many unknowns do we have since we are analyzing impending motion we will say that my force a b will be equals to my force a b max which then will be equals to mu of these two forces, right, which is 0 0.4. Let me write it right now. So it will be 0 0.4 in AB. Then I will have the, this force over here, FC, will be equals to FC max. So it will be 0 0.3 times NC. And FD 
will be equals to fd max, which will be 0 0.3 nd. And in this particular case, the impending motion is in all the surface because there is no way that I can move one without moving the other one. So once I have that, then my unknowns are the normal forces. So I have one, two, three, and this one here, that is the one that I want to find, P. So the unknowns at the end, I said, unknowns will be P and C and AB and ND. So I have four unknowns, but I have four equations of equilibrium because I have two equations of equilibrium for the free body diagram A and two equations for equilibrium for the free body diagram B. So let me do those equations of equilibrium for the free body diagram of wage A. Then remember that this angle is known, this is 15 degrees, therefore this over here is also 15 degrees. So I start doing forces in x equals 0, that leads me to which force? So that leads me to p minus fc minus fab cosine of 15, and this one contributes to, and contributes also to the negative direction, nab sine of 15. And remember, we have this equation over here that is 0 0.4 NAB. And adding forces in Y equals to 0, I get that NC minus NAB cosine of 15, right, plus FAB sine of 15 equals to zero, equals to zero. You see that these two equations have three unknowns because I have N, NAB and then I have NC. So I cannot start with two equations with three unknowns. So let me do the equations of equilibrium for the free body diagram B. And there I have, remember this angle is also 15 and this angle here is also 15. So I will have, for when I add forces in x, I have, this is equals to zero, therefore I have, in x I will have FAB cosine of 15 plus NAB sine of 15, right, minus N, D is equals to zero. And then I have for Y equals to zero, I have N F A B, in this case negative sine of 15 plus N A B cosine of 15 minus F D minus 3,000 pounds. Okay, as you see here, I have two equations with two unknowns because I can substitute FAB by 0 0.4 FNA. So if I do that, I have 0 0.4 cosine of 15 plus sine of 15 times NA B equals to ND. And here I will have minus 0 0.4 sine of 15 plus cosine of 15 and AB minus this one right here is 0 0.3 and ND. All that equals to 3,000. So if I solve these two equations simultaneously, I get that ND, 
I got a little bit of small space. And D is equals to 2,894 pounds. And NAB is equals to 4,485 pounds. So I was able to find those two. And now with these two values, I can go over here and plug these two values over here. And in this case, I find NC in terms of NAP, plug it in here, and I am able to find P. So I will write the result for NC is equals to 3,000 a 68 pounds and finally p is equals to 4054 pounds so if i had a system of four equation with four unknowns so this is equation one two three and four and i did the first ones is three and four, I combined them, got these two results, and this one over here, I got them solving equations. So let me write that over here with equations one and two. And this is the solution of this problem. So the force that I need in order to move this wedge and overcome the friction to lift the wedge B that is uh, subjected to a force of 3,000 pounds is 4,054 pounds. So it's bigger because I have to overcome that friction.